Greetings, Pastor B here. It's time for the word of God. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. In the house of the Lord, I know that there is a word from the Lord that is going to bless me, that is going to heal me, that is going to transform me. So I get excited about the word. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. We thank you for allowing us to gather yet again in your name. I ask now that you would bless the word, Lord, that you would bless me, that I will deliver what you have given to me, that the word will fall on good ears, Lord, on good ground, Lord, and that it will bring forth a harvest that will lift hearts, that will transform lives, and that will make people whole by your spirit and by your word. We thank you again. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you're my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll be coming today from Mark chapter 5, verse 25 through 34. That's Mark chapter 5, verse 25 through 34, and I'm reading the NIV version. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet, instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see, the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you can ask who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and trembling with fear, told the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. My subject today, my faith is keeping me alive. My faith is keeping me alive. Let's look at this woman's situation. This woman was deemed by society as unclean, a castaway, having suffered for 12 years. This woman was unable to participate in Jewish life because of her sickness. We know that with constant bleeding, one could also possibly die. We know that she had already seen many physicians. The Bible tells us that this woman was getting worse rather than getting better. What can we imagine about her, though? However, I can imagine in my mind that her business was probably already in the street. She was already embarrassed about it. People had already talked about her. Her name was spread out, rumors and lies and all sorts of things. She may have tried many remedies, homeopathic, holistic, maybe some mental remedies, maybe even herbs, etc., in hopes of finding relief. The truth is that we are all looking for something to cure us of our ailments. We are all looking for something that will soothe our troubles, be it mentally, be it physically, we are all searching for something. Perhaps those around her, they may have even removed themselves from her. How do you think that made her feel? They may have shunned her and, 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 and cast her away, causing her to be a disgrace over something that she could not control. Her anguish had to be killing her inside. What do we know about this woman though? After trying everything else, she knew, not she thought, not she assumed, not she did research, not she searched on the internet. She knew that she had an opportunity to be healed through Jesus. She knew that something special would happen if only she touched the hem of his garment. See, with all of the people touching Jesus, I'm certain that they all wanted something different from him. Perhaps they wanted to be healed, but they really, really didn't believe. Perhaps they wanted to be next to him. Perhaps they wanted to walk with him or to gain his popularity. There was a crowd amongst the people, amongst Jesus, there was a crowd. This woman wanted nothing but to be healed. Based on what she heard and what she knew about Christ, she knew by faith that this was her time. 
Hallelujah. Perhaps she had seen Jesus perform a miracle before in another setting, but she couldn't get to him during that time. We don't know. This woman may have even used up all of her Medicare, her Medicaid, her long-term disability, her FMLA, even her OHIP coverage may have even maxed out this policy or that policy. Perhaps they were all extinguished and diminished. She could probably no longer get specialized treatment. But again, she knew that Jesus specializes. Oh, bless the Lord today. She knew that Jesus specializes in things that are impossible. She had come to the end of the road, but her faith in possibilities with Jesus never ran out. I said, although she tried all sorts of things, the Bible tells us through those 12 years, she knew that her possibilities with Jesus never ran out. Jesus told her, after she touched the hem of his garment, Jesus told her that it was her faith that made her whole, not her money, not her status, not her ability to speak properly, not her mother, not her father, not her education, not her femininity, but her faith. Somebody type in right now, faith. It was her faith. It was her faith. All she had for Jesus was her faith. And because of that, Jesus was required to stop and recognize her perpetual faith when she touched the hem of his garment. Oh, bless the Lord today. My faith is keeping me alive. What kind of faith keeps you alive? I'm glad you asked. The kind of faith that keeps you alive is the faith that is not expected from you. I said, it's the faith that's not expected from you. This woman didn't have regular faith. I'm certain that many of the people around Jesus had faith. They were there, obviously. They had to have believed in something. They would not have been there if they didn't have some level of faith. But we don't know what the needs of the others were. The Bible doesn't tell us that. But what we do know is that this woman had a faith that was not expected from her or expected of her. She expressed a level of faith that was not like the others. But God knew that it was her time. She was in the right place at the right time with the right level of faith. That faith that was unexpected. She may have even been identified in the crowd by those who knew her situation, but the Bible says that nothing stopped her because she pressed her way to get to Jesus. She was on a mission because she believed that if she can only touch the hem of his garment, Jesus can heal her. See, people may have thought that they could talk to him and he could give them some advice. Some may have been there because they thought that if he anoints me, I can get what I need. Some may have just been there because it was just popular to be there for the day. It was the place to be for the moment. But this woman had faith that no one expected. She believed that all she had to do is touch him. Right now in your life, the, you need the same kind of faith. You've got to exercise the faith that touches God. I'm not talking about mediocre faith, but I'm talking about the faith that gets the attention of Jesus. If you touch God, if you touch Jesus, he will touch you back. Hallelujah. Don't worry about what others expect from you because they think they know what you're capable of when you set your eyes on Jesus. They think they know you. They think they know your next move. But the truth of the matter is half, if not most of them, don't even really care about your situation or what you're going through. They don't even expect you to survive. They don't expect you to be healed. They don't expect you to do anything more than what you have been doing all along. But this today, this moment, this year, this month, this week, it is your time to exercise of faith that is not expected of you. This time you got to say, I'm even going to have the faith and I'm going to surprise myself. I'm going to get God's touch like I have never gotten it before. Why would God love anyone any less? Why would God love me any less than another? My mother used to say that what's good for the goose is good for the gander. And the Bible declares that God is not a respecter of person. So God, I'm touching you with my faith. I'm touching you with my faith. I need to get your attention because you have something and I need it. I must have it. You've got something that I need and I'm going to touch you with my faith. Hallelujah. You've got to declare today, I'm not dying in this situation. I'm not dying in this mess. I'm not dying in this foolishness and this confusion, but my faith is keeping me alive through it all. And I know that once my faith touches you, God, I will live. The faith that is not expected from you. Oftentimes in sports, 
Those who moderate the games will take the stats from the past games in the season and downplay some teams and some, some players. They'll, they'll take what has been happening all season long and they'll downplay it. They will project doubt and defeat on those players and on those teams because they have not done well all season. Doesn't sound like it's fair, does it? They will say that they don't have hope in how they are playing because they have either fumbled the ball or they have had an injury or they just haven't performed well all season. Well, this is the time that you've got to work to surprise the commentators. Those who comment and those who are talking about you behind the scenes and those who are spreading your name around time. It's time for you to rise up and surprise them. And the naysayers, those of you who've said all manner of evil against you, exercise size of faith that is not expected of you. Give them something to talk about. Oh my God, that faith is not that is not expected from you is the faith that is going to keep you alive. Hallelujah. You also, you also, you need the faith where opposition meets you. You need the faith where opposition meets you. This woman expressed a level of faith that day that meant opposition was going to meet her. First, she was not supposed to mix with people. She was considered unclean because of her illness. Some of us have been considered unclean and unworthy because we have made choices or we fell victim to situations that are frowned upon by society. We are cast away because of our associations. Some of us were deemed unclean because we made differences or we made different choices before our marriage. Because the choices that we made as single people or even sometimes as married people because it didn't line up with our faith or it didn't line up with what our family members would do or it didn't line up with what we believe or our code of conduct. Yet the same ones casting the lots of judgment upon you are those who privately constantly lie, cheat, and steal. Oh yeah, your mess was exposed, but all have fallen short. All have come short of the glory. All of us need to repent and all of us need to be restored. You are not placed in situations. You are now placed in situations where opposition meets you. This woman also stood the chance of being scorned by the disciples for even trying to touch or even get that close to Jesus. I can imagine that although there was a crowd around him, not just anyone could get to Jesus. I want to assume that this, the disciples offered some shield of protection around him. I imagine that she had to push and I imagine that she had to press. You cannot, however, assume that she had all of her strength to do those things because the Bible clearly says that this woman was sick. She was constantly dealing with a loss of blood. She was not 100, but her faith. I said, but her faith was 100 strong. One translation actually reads that she had to sneak to get to Jesus. She was faced with great opposition, but her faith kept her alive. It was her faith that pushed her through the crowd. It was her faith that told her that there was a positive light at the end of the tunnel. No matter what oppositions you are faced with today, no matter who, no matter what rules, no matter what boundaries are in your way, allow your faith to keep you alive. Somebody say alive. Allow your faith to navigate you through and around the opposition. Allow your faith to cause you to go high when they go low. That's how you navigate through the opposition. Oppositions may meet you, but they cannot beat you. Your faith is going to spring board you into greatness. Your faith is going to propel you into your next miracle. Your faith is going to move you to the front of the line. The process of navigation may not be easy as you will be met with opposition, but with God, all things are possible. You just need faith to push through the opposition. You just need faith to take you through what the others are saying about you. You just need faith to escort you around the unfriendliness. You just need faith to chaperone you around the resistance around the antagonism and around the hostility. You just need faith to take you to a place of living and that living is according to God's purpose, not to man's desires for you or man's judgment, but according to God's purpose. Lord, please lift us up where we belong. You just need faith to reach the unreachable. You need faith to fight the unbeatable. You need faith to remove the unmovable. You need faith that stands the invincible. You need faith that conquers Anything, 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 anything. Your faith can help you to conquer anything. 
and my faith is keeping me alive. You ought to bless the name of the Lord right there. If you believe it, you ought to bless the name of the Lord right there. After you have applied the faith that is not expected of you, after you have applied the faith where opposition meets you, my friends, you must have the faith or you need the faith that draws from you. I said, you need the faith that draws from you. That is the faith where you have a lot to lose by stepping out. With all that this woman had lost, she should have lost everything by stepping out, stepping out of the rules, stepping out of the boundaries. Stepping out takes a great deal of courage. It takes a great deal of resolution. And I want to challenge you today that you should resolve. It takes a great deal of resolution. You should resolve today, right now, that you are not, that you are going to allow your faith to keep you alive. Can you imagine how much of this process, how it drew from this woman, but yet she had nothing else to lose. She only had to gain. She was at the bottom of the barrel. And after trying everything and everything has failed, she decided to try Jesus. You ought to try Jesus today. If you've been caught up in a situation and you've been going around in cycles and cycles and it's not working out for you, allow your faith to bring you to a place where you meet Jesus. And I promise you, he specializes. Don't think that anything is too hard for God for a moment. God can work on you. God can change a heart in a moment. God can reverse a situation in just a moment in the twinkling of an eye. God draws faith. Great faith rather draws out of you when you're in tight situations. I said great faith draws out of you. It pulls out of you. Greater faith extracts something from you. It taps into an area that you've never had to tap into before. Science believes that we only use a portion of who we are to live the lives that we're living. They believe that we only use a portion of our brain. They only use they believe that we be, use a portion of our bodies. So to stay alive, you've got to dip back into who you are, the core of who you know God has made you, the core of who you know God has called you to be and step out on faith. That's right. Step out on faith. I heard a great preacher say one time that faith is stepping out on nothing, believing that you're going to land on something. I said faith is stepping out on nothing, believing that you're going to land on something. And you've got to have the kind of faith that is comparable to your flow, that is comparable to your issues, that is comparable to your problem, that is comparable to your difficulty. The harder your issues flare up, the greater your faith should increase. You've got to have faith that is based in knowing Christ, believing Christ, and living like Christ. I said you've got to have faith, faith that is based in knowing Christ, Believing Christ and living like Christ. Knowing Christ. Knowing his ways, his statutes, his miracles. Knowing his character, knowing his grace, his mercy, his rewards and joy, but also knowing his rebuke. Believing Christ. Believing that his love is above all. Believing his salvation. Accepting him completely and all that comes with having a relationship with Christ. Believing that he is coming again to receive those who are ready to return with him. Yes, that's knowing Christ, believing Christ, and thirdly, living like Christ. That means forgetting your past, recognizing that you need him to live abundantly, applying the statutes that you have learned from knowing him, seeking to please him with your life and with your service. When all else fails, just stick to what you know. This is how you establish your faith. And once you have established a solid foundation in Christ, once you have established a sound, solid foundation in Christ, you realize that it becomes your life source. You will realize that it becomes your lifeline. You realize that it becomes your only means of survival to put my trust and my faith in Christ. I know the economy feels like it's worth a penny. I know that jobs are so bad that even the jobs are looking for jobs right now. I know that security doesn't feel like security. 
security. I know that relationships are non-relational. And I even know that healthy that health is no longer healthy. Social media is no longer social. The world is crazy and thoughts are crazy. Mental illness is at an all-time high because the pressures of life are trying to tear us down. But for those with no faith, it can seem like a dismal situation. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I just said everything just feels weird right now. That people talk about how 2020 has been such a crazy year because it feels so weird and because so many things have gone wrong and I can hear you say but pastor you don't understand what I'm going through and you're right because I don't understand what you're going through the truth of the matter is I don't even understand what I'm going through oh help me Holy Ghost but in order to survive my faith and your faith must supersede all understanding I said my faith and your faith it must even supersede all misunderstanding if we can but get to the place where we allow our faith to be our map. We won't see the bumps in the road. We won't see the trials and the tribulations, and we won't see the difficult situations to be trouble at all. Rather, our faith identifies the wrong and considers it an opportunity for God to work a miracle. What are you talking about, preacher? I'm talking about a miracle of peace. I'm talking about a miracle of hope. I'm talking about a miracle of deliverance and a miracle of forgiveness. I'm talking about a miracle of order. The Bible says that all things be done decently and in order. I'm talking about a miracle of restoration and a miracle of love. You see, faith always points back to God. Faith always pushes God's agenda. Faith always connects with God, how God sees us. And faith always births a newness in Christ. Faith always puts us in a winning position. And faith always, it always bears an eternal assembly with God. And right now, my faith is keeping me alive. If you believe it, just type it one more time. My faith is keeping me alive. The pessimists would say that we're on a rapid decline. For the believer, this is an opportunity, however, for God to move. And we know that our God works best when things are in a shamble, when things are torn up, and when things are chaotic and in question. That's the best time for God to show himself strong. And I've come to realize that my job is not keeping me alive. I said it's not my job that's keeping me alive. My education is not keeping me alive. It's not my relationship or my connections that are keeping me alive. My status and my tax bracket can't even keep me alive. Hallelujah. My home security when I lay down to sleep at night is not keeping me alive. And my health regimen every day is not keeping me alive. But through struggle and the breakdown of everything around you that you've depended on for so long, you've got to realize that it is your faith that will keep you alive. My faith is the inner belief that surpasses what the natural eye can see. My faith is the center of my psyche that reminds me that there is something beyond my failures. My faith cancels out the white noise that clouds my vision of God's greatness. You see, my faith is the foundation of my life. My faith is my complete and total truth trust in God. My faith is generated because I have heard Jesus and I believe in what Jesus has said. My hope is built on nothing less but Jesus' blood and righteousness. My faith will keep me calm during a storm. My faith will regulate me when I'm having an off day. My faith will always bring me out of a horrible pit. I'm talking about faith here. You see, my faith will help me to see clearly in a foggy situation and my faith will resurrect that which has been cursed in my life. My faith will, re re will reverse what has been dead in my life. And my faith will cause me to make quality decisions and get the wisdom that God has for me. My faith is keeping me alive. Hallelujah. If you want to know why I haven't given up yet, it's because of my faith. If you want to know why I keep bouncing back, it's because of my faith. If you want to know why I keep forgiving when I have a justifiable right not to, it's because of my faith. If you want to know why I keep a smile on my face when I know I should be crying, it's because of my faith. If you want to know why I keep it moving when I know my business is in the street and when I know the community is saying all manner of evil against me, it's because of my faith. It's my faith that makes a difference on the outlook of my situation. My faith tells me that the glass 
glass is half full while others are saying that the glass is half empty. My faith tells me that all is well when the report says that this is the end. My faith tells me that it belongs to me when the analysis says otherwise. My faith is keeping me alive. By faith, you need to reach out and you need to touch God. Forget about the others who are trying to, to get to Jesus for whatever their reasons are. Forget about them. You need to do something unique for God. You need to do something that you have never done before to touch the heart of Jesus. It is impossible, however, to touch Jesus and he not offer wholeness in return. I said you can't touch Jesus and you not walk away feeling better. Jesus is so true to his word without him even knowing, the Bible says, by virtue of the fact of who he was, he had to heal her without even trying because Jesus is who he says he is. Huh. Because he was healing, because he was the resurrection in the flesh on earth by touching her and her faith connecting with him, Jesus had to heal her and not even try. The Bible says he looked around. The Bible says he kept looking around to see who was it that touched me. Now I know Jesus knows all things. But I want to say that maybe, perhaps, that one caught him off guard just a little bit. Hallelujah. My faith is keeping me alive. God is not a man that he should lie. He's not the son of man that he should repent. What his word declares, he declares that if you seek me, my face, you surely will find. So right now, forget about how your situation looks, but allow your faith to keep you alive. Forget about what is being said about you. Forget about the exposure. Forget about the embarrassment. Forget about the pain. Forget about what you've tried before, but allow your faith to keep you alive. I declare right now that your faith will grow and it will grow because you believe the word of God. I decree and I declare right now that your faith will get you through your areas of suffering. I declare right now that your faith will keep you covered under the blood of Jesus Christ. I declare that your faith, be it the size of a mustard seed or maybe even greater, will manifest a harvest of healing. I said it will manifest a harvest of healing and productivity and success and that God will get the glory out of your life. I speak it right now that everything must line up under the will of God. Everything must come subject to the power of God according to your faith and according to his will and his purpose. Live, live, live. The Bible declares that the just shall live by faith. It says the just shall live by faith. So that means your faith, oh, it's going to keep you alive. That's the only way we can live. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. You must have faith just to believe that he is who he says he is. Your faith will give you new life. It will keep you alive. One translation says, verse 33 says, Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet. And trembling with fear, says she told the whole truth. One translation says that she confessed the story to all the people who were around. She told everybody. When she started confessing, she told everyone what happened. She told her story. Her faith put her on spotlight, but not for her glory, for God's glory. And because she told her story to everyone, what are you trying to say, preacher? What I'm trying to say is you've got to realize when you allow your faith to keep you alive, when you endure hardness as a good soldier and you push beyond the break and you reach beyond the break and the Bible says love covers a multitude of sins and you keep reaching and reaching and striving for God, everyone around you, even those connected to you, everyone in your circle and even in your bubble will reap the rewards of the faith. That means your family, your friends, your co-workers, everyone gets the rewards of faith. The Bible says she told everyone the story and we know that when you hear the story of faith, you're going to be blessed. So that means that everyone around you is blessed when you live by faith. Everyone around you is increased. Provision, productivity, peace, and restoration comes forth and is manifested when you live by faith faith. Hallelujah. The miracles that you experience in God are never just for you. They're never just for you. They are never just for you to learn and grow from, but they are for, for someone else to learn and grow from. They are designed for God's glory. Finally, Zechariah chapter 8, 23 says, he said this, 
A day is coming when 10 men, people from every nation, speaking every language, will grab the cloak of a Jew and beg him. Let us come with you because we have heard the true God is among you and we want him to save us too. That's a prophecy. For this reason, many will cry out, my faith is keeping me alive because they believe. Hallelujah. Let us pray now. Lord, we thank you for this word. We thank you that we have enough faith to even bow in your presence, Lord, to even seek you in this moment of prayer. We thank you for the opportunity to connect with you by faith. You said in your word that, that without faith it's impossible to please you, please you. So we believe now by faith that you are who you say you are. We believe that you have raised Jesus from the dead. And I ask now that you would touch everyone who's watching. I ask, Lord, that you would touch everyone who's listening, Lord, by faith, according to their faith, that they believe that you are, that you are God Almighty, that they believe that Jesus Christ is is the risen Savior, I ask God that you would touch them now from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet, that you will reserve a special blessing, God. We know that you are one who specializes, and we thank you for Jesus Christ right now. Lord, give us the strength and the courage, Lord, to rise up and to exercise our faith so that it touches you and so that it touches Jesus. And Jesus comes down to see about us. The Holy Spirit comes down to check on us, God, because of our faith. Lord, when situations get rough rough, and, and, and those who are watching and listening can't sleep at night, I pray, God, that your peace will settle and be. Lord, be with us because of our faith in you. Not faith in our own selves, not faith in our jobs, not faith in our family members, not faith in the stock market, not faith in our prime minister or our president, Lord, not faith in our leaders, community leaders, but faith in you. We have no choice but to trust you. Lord, I pray that you would honor our request to this day, and I ask that you would bless those, Lord, those who are unsaved, Lord. I hope that this word exposes, God, your true love, that your light of grace will shine upon them now, and they will cry out, what must I do to be saved? I call forth the backslider now, in the name of Jesus, that they will repent, because they see who you really are, God, that the scales have been removed from their eyes, and they see who you really are. Bless them now, in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that your salvation will infuse them now, in the name of Jesus, and that they will confess with their mouth and believe in their heart that you have raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you for this time of sharing. Bless us now, Lord. Bless the hearer and the doer of the word also. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I trust that you have enjoyed this word today. This word has blessed my heart. It has challenged me to increase my faith. It has challenged me to do something more than what I've been doing. To get something that you've never had, you must do something that you've never done. You've got to increase your faith so that it gets the attention of God. So that when you reach out to Jesus, he has to look and say, who was that? I have to bless them because of their faith. Like I said, faith always pushes God's agenda. Faith always connects you to God. It always brings you back to God. Allow your faith to keep you alive today and stay connected to God. 